Team Liquids turn to pick. Flada. Navi. Two teams that are hungry for the championship here. We have Navi and Team Liquid going head to head here in the grand finals of ESL 1 Germany. And we are in the draft for the fourth game of the series. It is two to one in favor of Team Liquid. Of But if Navi can pull off a performance like they did in that game we just watched, I think they'll be a golden for forcing out the fifth game of the series as well. We are in well into the draft and I love seeing them steal. Steal the Slardar away from Team Liquid. I think that is awesome. They get the Disruptor with that again. Uh, we do get to see for the first time this series, Taiga's Earth Spirit, though. Yeah, I, mean, I think it makes sense. If you look at that last game, it feels like the, both teams have figured out what's going to win here today, and that's initiative. You want to be able to take fights at all times, whether it's against one guy or the entire squad. Disruptor Slardar, arguably the best hunting duo we've got in Dota right now, and the four-position Earth Spirit is quite possibly the best, um, I guess... Killer too. I guess it's probably your top three in some ways. Let's catch Central. Yeah, uh, I, I would say across the tournament with Tiger's individual performance, I actually think his Earth Spirit might have been his weakest. And that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just he's been playing outstanding in every game. Yeah. Uh, but his Earth Spirit, it's just a hit or miss hero. Like you're, we've talked about this. Uh, I, I don't remember if it was on broadcast, Kyle, you talked about it. I think it was with, with Z Freak saying, it doesn't matter if I'm playing amazing on Earth yeah. Spirit. If you miss that one key no, roll, yep. you just killed yourself in the yeah. fight. Grim so stroke. it's always going to be a little bit dangerous. And this is something completely new, by the way, the Grimstroke uh, coming out here for Insane most likely has not been played by him, I believe, all tournament, Correct. at least not also, in top six. for Tyga's Earth Spirit, it has been picked six times for uh, for Team Liquid for Tyga, uh, and won five of them. Mm -hmm. So so there is that. But the, this Good is the first, uh, the first Grimstroke for, uh, for Team five Liquid this tournament, for sure. Remaining. It's one of their old school combos. This was a Insania special for some time, back when they were picking a lot of Coddle as well. It was in his repertoire, top three. Um, big fan of it, and it also activates a lot of Mickey's hero pool, but more importantly, it allows them to play with even more aggression. So, look for Mickey to be on something that's perhaps a bit more active. I'm not a huge fan, uh, and it looks like neither team is. I believe it's left unpicked on Ben. Yeah, no Spectre. Mm -hmm. It's too slow for this series. It just feels like it, and neither squad's been able to pick up a win with it, and I'm not surprised. Uh, I think there's something about this Grimstroke that it's the first game Liquid play against Slaughter and the first two Grimstroke. I think there's something going on here that they consider this a counter. Uh, Slaughter can't use Sprint if he's soulbound. He really can't get. Away, I mean, he can't get away from his teammate, right? Someone else has to be so, just as fast he as he can is. use it. He can use it, but he can't get away. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of tied to the move speed of his allies. Unless so you get an IO. Yeah, yeah, I guess that you're can, tied. They can both like <laughs> yeah. ride off into the sunset perfectly. Um, I do think that hero might actually get banned though, but we'll yeah. see. Uh, Turn to yeah, bang. I think um, I think that's that's it. I think that's why they want this Grimstroke or Insania's like kind of out of ideas. Like the the he doesn't oh. want to pick Rubik again. I guess he doesn't like the matchup against Slardar and uh, the Disruptor it, 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 and his Oracle's band. He's been uh, playing very few heroes. It's not ideal with the Earth Spirit either. I don't remaining. think they kind of fulfill the same roles in the game now. Because uh, you you want to have at least something that I think boosts the effectiveness of your cores rather than just having two mm -hmm. innate spellcasters. Right. I think that's a fair point that Grimstroke leads better into the second phase that they can pick combos. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would I would love to see if the Soulbind is thought of in that way because there's no immediate synergy between these two except the Inkswell into what? roll. You have what nothing that you double down with uh, Soulbind. What happens if you have if you go Ax? Right. Or sorry, bang. if you pick Sven. Mm -hmm. And then Ag stun a soulbound target. What happens? I think he just stuns the first guy and doesn't jump again. Or maybe uh, he stuns I the first think, guy and jumps again. Yeah, I think that the second one, what he says. I think you. Because you. Guessing. No, no, no. I think you know if you guys are soulbound and I charge you first. Yeah. He's, I will charge you, but into the oh, into <laughs> also charge you. And now you're trying to get away, Kyle. Like, like, it will five, be basically clone yourself. And then. No, no. It will be. I think it will be. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll probably work. stun the first guy and then immediately stun the second. That's what normal what? Hannah does. Hey, hey bandit. We'll, we'll, we'll never, never know. know. Too bad. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised to see the uh, Faces Void being banned out against Navi, though, because our Australian colleagues got to talk to Vichun during uh, one of the group stages that they won, uh, group stage games. And Vichun said he does not like Void. Faces Void, this is. And uh, it's banned here. Well, maybe his captain does. 
Yeah, the there's yeah, you, a, better yeah. <laughs> you don't get a say in this, Vichun. Um, we have a Juggernaut Five, coming seven, out from Team Liquid. Three, if you guys want a faster core, I guess Juggernaut fits that bill. Very good friend of Grimstroke. Um, yep. Benefits massively from the move speed, can chain the stun into, or his spin into a stun, and you can't really avoid it because he's magic immune while spinning. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I think you have a couple of options. Either you try to get the slaughter away from this lane, or you might have to go very early boots and uh, level in sprint, so you can try to outrange the jugger. Um, oh. Alternatively, maybe a very specific kind of support can counterplay this, but there's not many options. It's quite nice when you um, uh, when you have an Earth Spirit, you want to have a core that you can kill with. So you already guarantee that this Grim Jug lane, if Tiger rotates up, doesn't really matter if there's levels and sprints of boot, whatever, that's going to be a kill, like with a double stun and the spin. So now if they pick Boxy or Koifa, something that also has kill threat, it just becomes a much easier game for the Earth Spirit to play. You don't want to be forced to play in just one area of the map. And they go with the Wisp on Navi. Huh? Another game we see it. Yeah, and the, the IO Slardar, that was mm -hmm. the reason why Team Liquid was able to run away with the first game of the series. We see it being very successful. Um, do you guys think it is indeed the, the Slardar IO lane as well? They'll run that as an offline? I think so. And I think it's a it's a decent solution to the problem, right? Slardar gets boots. Five seconds. You can probably outrange it, yeah. run away. It's quite nice. I've always liked it against Jug too, because Jug is very much... Um, it's not really a sustained DPS carry until you have a bunch of items. It's all about the Omni Slash. Mm -hmm. So if you tether mech during it or get a reload out, like you can always spend a support's big cooldown for the enemy carries. And that's a trade that pretty much anybody's going to be willing to take. Uh, so so like we're going to need to find some way of like Navi just grabbing another kind of semi carry. Storm. Uh, Storm not bad, but I, I just, uh, I'm a bit concerned. Same reason we saw in that first game. Like, you're just going to have limited damage output on the side of Liquid, especially against BKBs and Navi with Wisp Slardar. Like, we saw this in game one. This is a terrifying combination of heroes, and they still Ten haven't seconds. revealed the, the heroes that are actually going to deal the damage, specifically whatever they get for V2. I mean, you have to consider they gave it away willingly, and they play this strategy themselves. I think two or three games this tournament, they've played IO Slardar. So, well, they know if anybody story. knows what to do about it, it should be Liquid. Yeah. Oh, you're going to pick anti me Anti-mage. Oh, interesting. You guys like it or no? I got a, the cojones on my man Vtune, man. I've seen a lot of incredible Dota 2 players. Burning, Ame, Arteezy, Resolution, all in grand finals. Say, like, give me Anti-mage. You know what they all had in common? They all lost? They lost. Uh, <laughs> they did play Anti-Mage in one game this tournament so far. It was uh, it was one of their first, it was their first group stage series versus Cyber Legacy, uh, where they were able to win with the Anti-Mage. And ever since we've not seen it on barely anybody. I mean, it is amazing against the, the Liquid lineup. I wouldn't say it has the best synergy with its own team in this no. game, but awesome against Storm, awesome against Earth Spirit and Grimstroke. You have all that innate magic resistance. Against Jugger, you get a Manta. Yep. Can probably just get out of any any sort of bad situation in this game. So it's just. I mean, whether the Storm, I, I kind of like it again. It's just, Five I do agree, remaining. but like, this is the VTune show now, all of a sudden. Like, everybody else what do you mean is all of a sudden? It has been the VTune show well, for, for quite a bit. This is. Like, I don't know. They linked up. They're like, we're giving you our power. Just please win us this game. Because it's effectively what AM does in like 30, 35 minutes in. If you can get huge. As Sin said, like, none of these heroes really deal with AM too well. If he gets BKB, he's unkillable. Yeah, basically. And it's just... What does he have to really help him out? There's zero team fight uh, with with his lineup right now. One of the things that we like about Vichun is that he is very... Like, he starts fighting with his team fairly early, right? Can he even do that on the Manta Mage? He can do it against Storm. I think you can TP counterplay a Storm gank, uh, but for the most part, you kind of want to be left alone to farm. Uh, and what I believe we're going to see from Navi in the last pick is something like a Tiny for Iceberg. Like, you yep. want that, the kind of early game, heavy momentum-based mid-hero that just wants to find kills and just make space on the map, really. So how is Team Liquid going to solve this? They have the overall last pick. Uh, they are lacking a boxy hero, uh, it seems. Mm. What, what, lane does, what does boxy remaining. play that's really good against Anti-Mage in lane except Slardar? Uh, Void LC. Spirit is still in the pool. I don't know if he's considered good. That is a bad matchup for Void. Mm. Okay. Uh, I think Timber Saw is decent. There's the Tiny. Um, LC or Timber. I think you're, yeah. you've got it. Uh, I, I prefer bars as well. I, I prefer LC here just because then you have an easy cleanse for the slaughter amp, and you cannot get rid of. Uh, you can't block dual as anime. Yep, that's true. 
Legion Commander. There it is. Good call. Oh, you just you need to have an answer, right? Like you have one hero. It has to be something that no matter what any major buys, with the exception of uh, Lincoln's, I suppose, you will be able to duel and kill the AM. And if you don't have that, this game gets really tough to win. Liquid, a more balanced composition. They need everybody to kind of get a good start. They need a lot of moves made. Feels like Navi, Iceberg, get a few kills, buy time for V2, and eventually he can take the game for you. Yeah. So you think it's a little bit easier for Navi to execute their draft this game? Yes and no. I think AM is just a game. That's a finals losing hero. And if VTune can take this one, like, you know, hats off to him. He's like my new superstar carry for sure. If he's not already. But like, this is tough, especially against a boxy LC. Yeah. I, I like the Legion last pick. I think it's ballsy, but it has a lot of synergy with Grim. Um, there's a double duel. There's the Inkswell. Mm -hmm. it, it lines up very nicely. Don't really have a clear favorite in this one, honestly. I think it's really close. That's uh, good. So, yeah. yeah. Not gonna yeah. choose anyone. All right, we don't. You don't have to. We're gonna see uh, how this plays out on the field. Let's head over to a commentary team of Odie Pixel and Fog for some more Navi versus Liquid. Here we go, game four now, the best of five, Navi versus Liquid and Fog. Indeed, as talked about the panel, we're getting a, an anti-mage game coming out from VTune. I mean, what, what, what are your sort of thoughts on the AM coming into play here? Is it going to be a good game for him, or do you think uh, Liquid's got uh, ways to trip him up? If he can get away with the game, if he can get away with the first like 25, 30 minutes, it can look like first 25 minutes. If he can get away with that, it can definitely look like a pretty solid AM game. I think there's some things he can get tripped up from though. The insta grim stroke in particular can be a little annoying. The silence, you actually have to pre-click your E, otherwise you actually do get silence. It doesn't you know, if it's in mid-air and you click E, it doesn't do anything. It's already gonna hit you, it's gonna connect you, silence you. That can be one of the more annoying things. And I, I mean we're gonna see how that lane does go too, because Legion Commander versus Disruptor, it is that strong dispel. So we'll see how much pressure they can apply to VTune, but if he's able to actually get away with the farm, this looks like it could be an AM that can take over in later stages. Well, let's see what he's, what he's able to pull off and and, and, and that's you know, sort of outside of the AM there's a lot of strong things going on from Na'Vi's lineup because they as yeah. the panel said, they have been able to get their hands on that Slardar IO that we did see Liquid have a, a very easy time with in the first game of the series. Yeah, but it is because of what lane that they were up against as that IO Slaughter and Liquid. They should know how to play versus it. If they're the cool. masters of this IO Slaughter, right? They're Grimstone Jug. That's their idea of how to break oh. it. Just that kill threat always on general. There we go. Again, a five man. Smokes out. And they're able to start things off. Tiger looking for the body blocks on. Always want to fly. Allowing the rest Adam. of them to come in. And they'll be able to do so. And first blood. Goes the way of Mickey. But first in this. Good start for the Jug, and we're going to see him queue up the boots instantly. So I think they scouted that General has Windlace, and it is this Slardar plus Io lane, so they could, you know, the speed maybe, maybe in some situations could get them away from that spin and that Ink Swell combo, but if Mika gets early boots, I think this could turn out to be a very, very hard lane for General. And they're actually going to look to move stuff around, perhaps. I think right. Roger might play with the Anti-Mage, and they might put Always Want to Fly top, because he actually has the nuke there, and then he's not just full countered by Legion Commander. The we'll see if that begins. is the choice, though, as we see. The battle for the rune. Oh, no. Tiger off the map with the roll. General's going to be able to pop the crush, get in, get the bouncer in. Narvi actually gets a straight. slow on him, but they can't chase. Yeah, I think that they're going to get three at the four bouncer runes there, Narvi. Yep. So you always want to fly. He is going to stick up here in this top side. So they are doing exactly what we talked about. It's going to be just the full sustain lane bottom disruptor so he doesn't get countered by Legion. And then that 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 should prove pretty good for Vtune. I think top lane, as we already mentioned, it's already going to be hard for General. So I think this actually is the right move from Navi. But yeah, let's see if let's see if General is actually able to get too much up here because this does not look like an easy lane. It's usually Slaughter, he can actually turn and he can hit and beat on these heroes, but with constant kill threat on him, it might be tough for General up here. Now let's see. One of his able to achieve. I mean, I guess yeah, both both of these setups on this top lane have a uh, pretty good kill potential once they hit the oh, i guess kind of level three is going to be the big one for liquid the two points in the blade fury yeah with uh insania's backup so it's, it's going to allow mickey to run down either of these two heroes so definitely going to want to put the pressure on as much as possible onto the jug before he gets there yeah 
they just need to hit him all the times because as soon as level two hits as well like even two two three etc every single level that comes out from this Grimstroke, they're gonna make moves if general steps up too far on the wave he's gonna get spun and comboed on and it's a lot of slow it's a lot of damage and control to keep him under Take a look at the other lanes. Yeah, we're already seeing a Vtun. He's gonna get. He's gonna likely get free farm down here versus this double melee. It's yeah. a good lane for him too with the IO behind him. So that's that's exactly what Navi wants in this game. No, I think I think he's gonna be fine. I think the only sort of liability down here for Navi is if you know Roger gets caught out position and they're able to just get on top of him. But yeah, probably not gonna happen. I'm sure, Roger's going to be very careful how he moves around Vtun, and Vtun's gonna be sort of the. Just putting the pressure on, and any time they do roll in, yeah, suddenly Vichu's going to turn, start breaking through all their mana, and the plays are going to be very limited for Liquid's duo. Yeah, definitely agree. This is a really good setup here for Navi having this down here. They're going to look to try to make some pressure to Roger here with the level twos. But the mana's gone. Boxy. Well, Roger able to step to the side, and... Uh, and now, you know, what, what What have you got? Boxy, he's got a mango on him. I mean, they're, they're going to have to play like this, bring this sort of burst sustain down. Otherwise, any sort of time they try and get aggressive, they're, they're just not going to be able to do so again for quite some time because the mana's just going to be gone. No, this is this is just going to be full out free farm for V2, which, yeah, like we said, for AM, this is going to be really good for Navi. This is exactly how they want the game. And he is in some good matchups versus that Storm Spirit in particular versus Jug. He has a lot of different ways to play around these cores. See top lane. Top lane. Remember the combo there to try and chase down. Always want to fly, and they've got the damage to kill it. I'll take the kill. And yeah, this is the, 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 you know, what Navi's got to be very careful about. These two, this Grim Jug, you know, absolute killers in this lane. So any time that the Creep Wave's in a position where Navi's having to step far away from the tower, uh, there's a high likelihood that Liquid's going to be able to just run them down with this combo. Yeah. General did do exactly like what Cinderin was talking about, though. He's actually got the third point. He puts the point in the sprint. He's got the boots in the wind lane, so he might have movement speed to be able to disengage from that spin. And he actually is getting away with some stuff top, which uh, he's getting away with more than I thought he would, in particular versus this Jug and Grimstroke lane that was intended to shut him down. I see Tiger. He's headed over towards the mid lane. They could definitely look to punish. Quakefoot's having a good start here. Viceberg moves too far. He could kick him under tower really here. Really far up here, but Tiger still hesitating to go. I guess just waiting for the four minute runes, really. This is his main job. Yeah. Waiting to see. Running shirt. Okay, they, they get the setup. There we have. Kicks him under tower. And he's starting to get a few tower hits in onto him. Pots the verifier, but. The and they finish him off. Tiger, he's got another roll in a few seconds. Radiance Iceberg, not going to find attack. that rune spawn as it will be up top. Tiger, if he hits the roll, he'll probably have to kill it. Quakefoot getting aggressive on always want to fly as well. Might be able to and get him, and he does connect it. He does. He hits it. He'll get Tiger, the kill. a big one there, chasing Iceberg out of the lane for a decent amount of time and being able to kill him off. Trying to turn with the avalanche, but but as it was, the, 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 the stun still connected oh, with the roll. Cool? He, oh, he looks like he was trying to fall. He's going to fly as well, but yeah, he gets the connection. And, I mean, that's boots now for Taiga as well, too, so he can keep looking Radiant to roam around to these lanes. Going to kick Quakefa off to a good start. And I guess we didn't look, touch too much on about Quakefa's game because he is playing versus AM, so it always looks... It always immediately looks very scary. He's yep. not hes not too bad this game. There is some stuns, but the IO and the Disruptor can suffer a bit versus him because he can just get on top of them. Show the glimpse, you know, pulling him out of him. He does. Oh, he's annoying, but... Yeah. And he does, he does just have to be so careful against that AM. Like, he does. You know, especially, you know, a V-Tune AM as well. You know, V-Tune, he's, he's been very on the ball. He's very focused. This this player, he's not going to miss opportunities uh, like the, the, the quote was going to present when he comes balling into the midst of the fights. v going to find him. Kick back. Up top. Oh, he's going to fly. Quick, easy kill. So they are enabling Mickey to get this increased farm, yep. and he does need it, especially in this game, because V2 is gonna V2 is just getting away with full free farm. And as we said, this is a pretty damn good AM game in the mid game. This, I mean, this could turn out to be V2 just getting full free farm, and then unable to really contest and slow him down at all, just from this type of start here. I think they're trying to enable Quakefa as much as possible because he's the one that actually has to hunt and slow down the AM. If he gets a good Orchid timing, he actually is the one that can do so. Yeah. With Taiga rolling around, they can pose a lot of threat. Here we go, six minute rune, Taiga able to kick Iceberg away. Protect that rune for Quakefa and his bottle. How's our stacks for Liquid doing? As we know that they always do stack. We have a triple stack on both, both fronts at the moment. 
in their usual spots there when they do play Dire. Top lane, top. General, he steps up a bit too far. Oh, again, again with these moves. One, zero, three, four of the five kills really down to Tiger and his involvement. Yeah, Tiger and Boxy, when they play when they play these type of roaming heroes that we saw, you know, the Boxy Tusk earlier, they, they're very active. They just always are constantly looking from lane to lane to make these type of plays. Strike back it is seen by this ward this time around, but he's applying pressure, which is exactly the way Liquid needs to play. They don't want this game to ever be to a point where it's slowing down in this farming, because that's just where AM, AM thrives so much. They need to be making aggressive moves and enabling Coinfoot to get good Orca timing. Mid lane, quite far. He's playing around with Iceberg. The toss not enough to kill him, and now Iceberg is behind. He's able to wrap right around and be there once again. Oh my god, Tiger. He literally just walked through the tower, actually. Placed the ward, walked through the tower, and rolled onto him there. I mean, such aggressive plays. And they, they saw him the whole time with the ward, too. That he just, he still was able was to do it because of the way he did yeah. it. It's nice angles of approach there. And Tiger. 6 0 already for Liquid. Getting a lot done. Still, yeah, you know, complete free farm for the anti mage. Yep. But uh, Mickey's definitely gonna be able to give the AM a, a run for his money this game. It's, it's, it's both of the carries going straight for the Battle Fury. You know, we have seen Mickey on his jog sometimes go for the Manta into the Battle Fury, but I guess he feels this game he can absolutely get away with the Battle Fury first because he knows that the enemy carry is also going to be doing the same. And he's not threatened, I don't feel, by the supports at all. Like, he's got spin, so he can always play around the glimpse, and then that's the only real threat for him, really, from those two supports. General isn't really going to be that big threat as a slaughter, so I love this choice for Mickey to go greedy. He's, and yeah, I think there's no reason to believe that he isn't going to get away with this. It's very hard to see what sort of moves they can make onto the jog. Uh, even with Iceberg. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it's just Iceberg, really, who yeah. can make those moves. And he's he's very slowed down because of Tiger's movements. And I think that's exactly what Liquid's, Liquid's trying to do at this game. They know that Navi's gone for a very greedy style here with this anti-mage. So they can they can take advantage of the map a lot here. And there we go. They're going to start farming these these camps up here for Koikva. Get himself enabled. Massive stacks. Jelly. Jelly for the storm. Always a lovely one here. Radiant he's given the second charge. Two over to Mikke. Yeah, over to Mikke. Yeah, this is going to give Quakefa a, a beautiful burst of gold, and it's going to put him on track for a, a very good orchid time in this game. Yeah, and that's that's the key for them to actually start being able to actually hunt V2. Yeah. And I feel like on Navi, it, it is going to be a lot harder for them to ever actually set up for these hunts with their lineup because of how these lanes are going to go. Because of General being slowed down, it feels like he's pretty crucial to actually have that have that blink dagger for them to get catches before these like before disruptors level six in particular. Their catching is is quite weak early on until they do have that blink on one of these heroes at least, either Iceberg or General. And yeah, Liquid's just gonna play the farm game. They're gonna just play this greed with the storm, with the jug, with all these stacks from Insania. I mean, we've seen them come and sort of look up towards this top lane, but uh, Mickey, he's just able to turn on them as they take Actually out the Omni. Yeah, just uh, yeah. I guess he was to secure it. Wasn't sure if always one of flows maybe to come in with the static storm, but not quite six on the. On the disruptor, uh, but it's, it's still you know this this top lane will always want to fly in general. We're walking towards Mickey, they're not able to do anything. Maybe now with Iceberg, he doesn't have spin mana. He's actually short. He's able to. They've got him. He was actually two mana short, even with the stick when he pops it. That was such a heads up play by always want to fly. Quite far. He's come he's over, under but uh, there's a lot of heroes here. No glimpse, of course, for 30 seconds yet. They're, they're going to bail out of this one, but yeah, a, a big catch there, being able to find some sort of opening in uh, in Mickey's game. You know, he, he a catch that you would feel would never happen because yeah. of the jug spin, but yeah, he's just literally two, three mana short and gets the kill. That's such a heads up play by Navi. And any time where they can slow down the jug, it's it's everything for their game because then the anti mage gets his time to just get enabled and get that battle fear at this faster time and just outpace and out farm and that jug. And it is going to be a it's going to be a very fast timing on this battle fear from it is. Already seeing the, the sort of the numbers that he's hitting. Coifoot, he's. 400 gold away from his orchid already now, though, but always want to fly bottom. He's got his ult. He's setting up for Boxy. Straight down onto him. As uh, they the relocate to make sure that he's incredibly dead. Featuring secures the kill with a mana void. And with that in mind, and maybe even the chance to push for, for the tower. We'll see how aggressive they want to get. Okay, they won't. They'll, they'll take the tiny back out to mid.
Iceberg to resume farming as he himself closing in on the Blink Dagger. A few hundreds go. Yeah, the, the Battle Fury is going to be very quick on v -Tune, but yeah, so, so quite fun with this Orchid. It, it, he's going to have quite a good window to, to try and play aggressive and find that Anti-Mage whilst v is trying to get the Mantis style. I mean, how yeah. good do you think is Liquid's potential to hunt down v -Tune? It is, it is quite good now for the moment, especially before these Blink Daggers are online. Iceberg, he's about to have fi his finished up, so he's going to have to be very aware of the counter ganks and just be in a very good position to do so with this versus that AM. Because Koikva, him and Taiga, they're going to smoke immediately and look hunting. Yep. They're going to just start beelining, looking for this anti-mage every single time. They have a decent ward down, too, at the moment, kind of watching in between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 mid. So they're going to just settle for Iceberg at the moment. Find an easy one on River. Maybe not, because Roger's able to come with the turn that provides some heals. Is it enough? A lot of heals. Keep an Iceberg alive long enough to get the combo off. It will still fall, though. There's Liquid. They get the pick off. Despite Roger's v best attempts to keep him safe. V2 wants Koikva. He's blinking after him. See over it back in the jungle. They get the glimpse onto Tiger. He is still looking it's for the Orchid's out. They get the Orchid. He steps v into the silence. Oh, he took a risky move there, v -Tune. Also, at this point where he hadn't quite spent out on the Battle Fury, he goes hunting for that storm kill. And I mean, he was that was that was a big risk to take out, and a painful really was. risk as well. They're losing his life uh, in a game where he's having such a clean start as the anti mate. That's that's sort of your classic pub AM mistake there. Radiant's bottom tower is under uh, He just he really wanted to get the mana void, but the ward on the high ground, Orchid comes back up, and oh uh, man, that, that's a that's a huge blunder there. Because now we talked about how when the jug is off the map, it gives time for the anti mage to farm. Now Mickey, he's got the timing. He actually has the battle fury finished before. The anti mage, and he even has a DD rune to keep going farming. Radiant's and they're going to get stacks going for him, as we know attack. Liquid loves to do. They already have stacks prepared, even. He actually already has a triple stack ready. Uh, I'm sure, you know, Vichun is going to be much more careful how he turns up to fights now. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we're going to see these situations where he's solo chasing into to Liquid's half top lane. My and Sandy's been caught by the combo of Iceberg. Radiant's the rest of them will make it out. Nobody else up here, so Navi's going to have the space to take the tier one. Same down bottom. Boxing quite for pushing off. Radiant structure. And they will be able to finish their double blink daggers off of this too for Iceberg and for General. So they'll be able to match the movements and they'll be able to counter gank versus that Storm's movements a lot of the time too. But we do see, yeah, Liquid, they're taking bottom tower out. Some mirror movements. Radiance bottom and yeah, make it just a little fallen. bit of better timing on his Battle Fury. Dyer's He'll be able to farm a little bit faster. Attack. But Vtune, he also just cleared a triple ancient stack for himself Ooh. too. So Navi, they did have some. Yeah, now they the farm game on between Mickey and V2. They couldn't finish the tower, though. They actually did not finish the tier one top. Yeah, even with the four of them, four of them up there, my man, guy. All right. I mean, that's, that's pretty huge. Taiga, he might get punished and killed because he shows his face up here. And then they will be able to get the tower. Okay, I mean, maybe that was the plan. You know, why take the tower if it's uh, going to be a place where someone might come in and try and soak up some XP? Get the kill and then the tower. Sure. Koifa. Level 12. Straight to the AM. They're looking to get invasion. They're looking for, again, it's just going to be a constant hunt for V2. And, and oh, they, they see him for a second. He's gone back up with Roger. With him. They cut the well, chain. They put the ward down. They're looking. Trying to get the grab on Roger. Turn this eye away, but actually a little scared of committing any further with the TPs coming in from Iceberg. Glimpse onto Boxy. Straight into the static storm. Will pop the play mail. Try and hold his ground. Iceberg coming up with combo. Takes him out. In general, he's able to wrap around and get on top of Insania. It's Navi respond to Liquid's attempts to try and invade and get aggressive onto to V Tune, but we're seeing just good preparation from Navi. Having the IO around and making it a little hard for, for them to actually make those moves onto the anti mage. Yeah, now, I mean, Roger now has a full, He actually has a mech at such an early time this game. It's 15 minutes. We had the mech come out very late for the side of Liquid last game. This one is. Very nice timing for them. And a great counter gank. We see how hesitant Liquid is. As soon as the initial doesn't yep. work, Koikva has to be very careful. You know, that mana pool, it's everything. Especially versus that anti-mage, so... Has to back away as soon as they botch the initial initial jump there. And Jug and AM looks like they're going to be kind of matching themselves in that farm. Boxy definitely suffering, though. It, it feels like he's going to have a really hard game of what what he's really going to bring to the table for his team besides just to press the attack. Is under attack. Not going for the blink. He has this blade mail build, so he's not going to have that same impact that General will. Because General, he has a blink dagger. They can look to actually make a lot of plays with him because they have this IO pairing, too. The relocate's always threatening around the map. And we're seeing these sort of games as well. Quite far, it has to go for this BKB next, really. 
yeah. Yeah, against these heroes. Yes, You're just not having any sort of a game as a storm. No, nah, too much. There's just a lot of stuns now when they are getting all their levels online and everything, and just the mana burn in particular. Can't just kill your whole team with a mana void. Still keeping themselves at a pretty good pace here, Liquid. AM though, you know, he's, he's starting to get that space, V-Tune. It's really all about that Manta timing in particular for him, so he doesn't feel threatened by Koikfa, at least in this game early on. Insania with some nice little sneaky smoke movement bottom. Looks like he's setting up here for potential moves if they do see when Navi, when V2 splits up. And these sneaky wards, you always want to have like one ward in your jungle, one ward in the enemy jungle when you're playing versus a hero like Anti-Mage. So you can see, he eventually, you will be able to find some grab on him when he does look to jump on one of these camps. And Koikva, he's playing around this one down bottom. He's just waiting. And they're getting quite a lot of space around the map in Liquid right now. Mm -hmm. But for Navi, it really is, it's, it's all about V2, right? It's an anti-mage game, so it's, it's everything is for him. Koikva still in deep territory here. Dyer's and he's playing around his vision. Such a scary place to be. He's, he's gonna go for cutting the Kree wave. Iceberg is here with a blink, but yeah, he zips some TPs. Just uh, making sure that they don't really have an opportunity to push onto the tier one tower bottom for uh, at least another wave or so. Limit the the objectives that Navi can try and take. Yeah, I feel like Liquid is a little bit scared of these blink daggers at the moment because they can just they can get picked up on so many of their heroes in comparison. Just without Boxy with blink, Liquid can't set up for the same type of aggressive moves right now. Radiant's top tower is under attack. How's Tiger's Spirit Vessel going? He's, he's almost got it, so they're trying to, you know, of course there's that IO, get their own, get their Spirit Vessel going on Liquid. But a very, I mean, very even kind of farm style game here. It's just, it's gonna be this Jug versus AM just matching each other. And it's dead even on net worth, literal exact net worth. Oh, I changed this there. Oh, that was nice actually. I mean, is that is that okay for both of these carries, or is there a carry out of the two that you kind of want to be ahead of the other on? I, I think you're both you're both feeling pretty okay. I feel like Navi Navi's definitely feeling really good for the anti mage because he's now not getting hunted and he's got Manta online. So that that you know that window of like six seven minutes where he's terrified, it's just gone. He only died once during it. I feel for Navi a little bit happier, but I mean. We've seen Mickey with, these, with this jug. He's been able to match a lot of these times versus these super late games, versus yeah. these specters, versus these voids. So I mean, uh, he's still keeping at that pace uh, very nicely. And how how would you sort of rate a, a jug against the the AM down the line? Like well, I mean, he can, the thing is that he can he can kill the whole enemy team is the thing, right? Like hey, versus four heroes, the jug can just break super. I think AM he can have some troubles in this match. He can get tripped up a little. Definitely slipped into a more passive side of the game. Bottom boxy. And he's uh, he's definitely done it. No mana, no escape. More money for VTune. Big comebacks here from Navi in the last what last 10, 12 minutes. Liquid has not been able to find themselves a kill. It's all been Navi. Middle tower is under attack. Still, the gold overall does continue to rise for Liquid. Yeah. Oh, look at Mika's positioning. Iceberg. He's gonna get on me. Sneaky play from the jug there. They will find Insania on the other side there. General now up to level 12, so level 2 Corrosive Haze will be online. And they've got the tower, made by the creep, so they'll, they'll try and push down this tier 1. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Be tuned. Yeah, just uh, could see an identical build here. Radiant's above above the betrays for the face. And the, the big items at least. Battle Fury, Manta, Basher coming out from, from both of the carries. Radiant's top tower has fallen. I mean, it really is going to be a lot of just this carry Dyer's versus carry, but Liquid, they're getting attack. quite a bit more on the map, just being able to farm just on this, this tri-core. All three of them are farming, like even Boxy, even though he suicides himself down bottom, he got the wave so Radiant's far in top that top even top when top Navi top. gets these kills, they can't even take out the bottom tier one because of how far it was pushed. So they are splitting that wealth for Liquid very nicely, and at this AM, like we said, Navi, they're still farming on the AM, but Tiny and Slardar are starting to, starting to stagnate a bit.
I mean, because uh, Na'Vi, when you look at sort of the four heroes outside of the anti-mage, uh, as you said, obviously their job is to, to keep V-Tune safe. Uh, but, but can they actually afford to play aggressive without V-Tune, or do they just not really have the power to, to get those kills easily if V-Tune's not around? I think it's just, it's scary because of the counter gank. If they don't go on the storm, Quake is going to counter gank that. And then they don't have their anti-mage to counter gank the storm. So it, it's just weird because they don't want to pull V-Tune into these ganks. They want him to just be playing his own game. They always do have this nice potential for Roshan though on Na'Vi, which is, you know, because of that Slardar. But on the same time too, it's, just, it's similar for Liquid because they can just do it with Healing Ward at a different type of sustained. It's, it's very, it's very, very interesting kind of matchup here. And Quake has got his BKB too now, so... Even if they do get a, a jump on him, he's going to have the chance to respond. They're getting some big time. This is a big timing here for Liquid too. With this BKB, they have the Basher also on the jog at level 18. This this could be a big window for them to I mean, solidify their lead versus Navi. Okay, to, to try and find the setup on the front. Also, Omni slash backup in in just a few seconds. This could be a, a tough fight for Na'Vi as they get the jump in. Static Storm will go down. Mikkei over to the side. He gets done. He's going to go down. They take oh, his own Quite for does fall. And now Vijin is going to turn over towards Tiger. Another kill picked up by Na'Vi. There'll be a buyback from Iceberg. He's in with the combo. Catches both Insania and Boxy. Boxy's trying to run, but the Bashes are there. Vijin's on top of him. Boxy is almost certainly going to fall as they have the crush. A triple kill for Vijin. I sort of had eyes on, uh, on Mikkei running. And what, what happened to Quite for Fog? He didn't BKB. He jumped in, just got crushed immediately, and then Manta AM just cleans him up completely. A huge mistake from Liquid, and now the Corrosive face into Roche. Now it's an anti-mage with Aegis. Whole game has changed. Oh, absolute v -tune, a triple kill, and a Roche for this anti-mage. He's gonna push him very close to pretty much the level 18. That was, I mean, it looked uh, to be as, as the, 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 the perfect sort of setup for Liquid coming in like that, getting the jump on Iceberg. Having the iron pickups that they did, but just not able to execute it in the fashion that they needed to with Quake for making a huge mistake. Yeah, a huge mistake from him, really. Just zipping into the back. Just, he didn't click BKB. He just dies. And they've actually decided to give Iceberg the Aegis since he did use the buyback last fight. Okay. Not giving it to V2. He's feeling confident in himself. I mean, that's massive. Navi there gives them pretty much. I mean, that gives them everything they needed. Now they can just actually play a little bit more relaxed. But Liquid, maybe if they, you know, if they feel that, they might be able to take advantage of the relaxed state of Navi because they get this here. They're lo still looking to play active, and Mickey, he still is, like we said, he still is super farmed. Yeah, he's, he's still, still matching this AM. Anti match, yeah. So the they still are at disadvantage. Just yeah, this this is a big blunder there by Koifa. He has to be very careful because now it's also you didn't use the BKB, you died, and now. Anti-Mage is on his way and almost has Abyssal. So he has this counter for your BKB very soon. He already has the Basher, so... Coinfoot definitely has to watch out. One or two more mistakes of that, and that, that could just hand Navi the game. General and Iceberg, they're coming over. Mickey. Okay. General's gonna go in on the backlines, but he's instantly silent. Static Storm's down, controlling Insania for now. Mickey turns over, always want to fly. Boxy walks in. They've lost Insania, but they will be able to pick up always want to fly return. Omni's gonna come now. Big bounces onto Iceberg. Iceberg, you go down. The lockdown's there. Off the anti mate Mickey steps across. They've taken out General. They've taken him out. The once can they get always want to fly here? Over they roll. A second one for Mickey. The double kill is Mickey's cleaning up a bit. Silence out. Just jumped in. V -tune. They've got the damage. Mickey's on top of him. Vichu's gonna go down. He just jumped in. Or maybe feeling what that he could finish off the kill, but with Mickey around, Mickey's just able to step over. He has to be when Earth Spirit and Storm are still alive, he has to be very careful of the silences that can still come. He jumped right in, gets insta silenced by I think it was by the stone, by Taiga, and then he's just dead. They have enough control for him. I mean, I mean V2 and just slipping up big time. We, we just saw, you know, a, a great fight with V2 coming out top. Now it's Mikkei's turn to sort of take the crown hit. As he's got a pistol himself. Uh, he has, and he's taken down a tier two here as well on the bottom Radiant lane. Oh, uh, I mean, V-Tune has to be really Radiant careful playing around these silences. Like, it's, like, when these fights kick off and Tiger's still alive, this Surf Spirit, it, it gets stronger and stronger too. Like, this silence, it gets to a point where it's ridiculous. It gets to a point where it's like a six and a half second silence if he gets to level 22. And, I mean, Tiger's surviving in all these fights. Radiant's bottom yeah, V-Tune cannot make those seven mistakes. And that was them with the Aegis and with, I mean, how many buybacks was it from them too? Two buybacks from General and Roger. A uh, General and always want to fly. Ooh. Always yeah, want to fly that's... Dying a second time. 
I mean, that kind of just general in Iceberg's game is kind of just over at this point. And Koif is still growing. Boxy's still growing, too. And he always has that control for AM. I mean, this is going to be a tough tall now for V2. And that's, a, that's such a big mistake. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Mikke, as you say, full of Bissell and, and that bit of action as well. It's, it's pretty much put Mikke... I mean, he's about to hit level 22, whilst Vijun's only just entered into level 19, so nearly a three-level difference now between the carries. It's just how quick these things change, just when one of the carries survives a fight. Hey, Vijun, he's committed the gold, so he's got the Abyssal coming out. They're still looking to play aggressive. Want to fly, he's stepping in, Boxy, he's going to be able to find him. Fly. Instantly get in the duel. An extra bit of damage here for the Legion. Right, K lead now for Liquid. Radiant yeah, I mean, I mean, so nice. Well, what's yeah, the nice plan now? Growth. Can he can he still turn up to the fight? So at this stage, does he have to Radiant's go sort of back into farm mode? Under attack. I mean, he still he has to turn up to the fight. Radiant's is the problem because Liquid they're gonna they're gonna look to press his advantage here. He's gonna have to turn up, but yeah, it's definitely gonna look a lot harder for him now. He's he's fragile. He's only two thousand HP. He's got the Abyssal Blade fully finished up, but he doesn't have like a Scotty or anything for this high HP fool to tank all this damage that Liquid has coming out on all fronts. It's not just it's not just the Jug. Like we said, it's the Jug, the Storm, the Legion, the Earth Spirit Control. So many things V2 has to watch out for. And his two cores, they can't contribute nearly as much. I mean, in fact, General is he's starting to get to the point where Taiga's gonna surpass him. Navi. Iceberg stepping up. Quite far. Yeah, he's, he's ready to go. I mean, Boxy and Senya, they're coming in with a the wraparound. They're able to get the jump onto the back lines. Boxy finding always want to fly. Takes out the disruptor before any sort of fight can kick off. Deep Ward finding them the kill there. It looked like Navi was about to jump onto Koifa too there with General as well as uh, Vtune. They can definitely pop Koifa in most of these situations if he's not careful too. They still can insta-kill the storm. They just have to be careful not to get cleaned up afterwards. That's just, as we said multiple times now, Liquid. It's more about the full team or Navi. It really is starting to get to the point where it's all the weight on V-Tune's shoulders. It really is. And he's got a lot to, to pick up after that. Is under attack. That last fight, Dyer's pushing him behind the, the farm of Mickey's Jug. Their map is just it's shrinking very quickly as the, st as the storm just gets more and more farmed here. They get the map control for the runes too. Quite has an arcane rune. His teammates can't farm. They have to. They actually just have to sit behind Vtune and let him push the lanes out. Because anyone else who shows is just going to get killed. Even when they look, look at how careful they're playing. They have no vision really on the map at all. Just that one ward bottom. Look at Liquid's coverage. The sentry coverage. The ward coverage. It's just not giving Navi opportunities to have any vision. Besides that one ward, of course, that we see. Yeah, that's insane. They, 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 they have literally smoke. like what ten sentries yeah. down on the map right now. Yeah. I mean, this is this is what Insania has been doing a lot of their games. Yeah. That just ward coverage up the wazoo. Here we go with the smoke. Navi, seeing what they can catch. It's going to be caught by Scan, a scan. They know to expect something coming in from this direction, Liquid. Yeah, they'll just back away and put themselves on the high ground, make it putting themselves in a very, very safe position here. And the team's gathering for a smoke themselves now. And they know that Navi just tried for something. Yep. See so if they can hit back. It's Boxy and Tiger lead the charge. Boxy's They've gonna... got the lanes pushing in in a nice a place too, and it's, it's about to hit 30 minute mark, so runes and bounties. Boxy, who's going to be able to find? He's going to get the jump! He's going to get the catch! Boxy! He's got him in the duel! A V-Tune, he'll fall, 10 for 75. Boxy again with the catch. As they finish off Roger, Koifa's ready to zip over for more. Rolling in, Tiger closes the gap. Ott's always want to fly. Iceberg will turn with the combo onto Tiger. It's not enough to kill Tiger off. Iceberg goes for the BKB TP out. He's the only one to make it out alive as Na'Vi lose the other four members. As again, these smoke movements and, and Boxy just always finding the jump to start the fight off the Liquid. And they couldn't even get, what, the reload? They had to try to get the relocate si save off, but they couldn't. They can't actually get V2. And, I mean, V2 shows him. He reveals himself. He gives them literally full information of where he is. He gives them the free jump. Another... Ah, oh, V2 making some big mistakes this game. Getting punished by Liquid. Oh! Now, oh, okay. He just got it off the courier, I believe, so he just clicked it. Whoops. But now... I mean, they're, they're going to get a Rax advantage, and now um, this this is just impossible, it feels, for V2 now. He's going to be a wrong type of, I mean, they're, of a miracle. They're going to be down pretty much 20k right now. Radiance middle has fallen. And this Rax gone. 
And so many items now being collected from Liquid. Oh, look at the glimpse! Bouncer! Bouncer, make your head! He tossed him out of it! He tossed him out of the glimpse! No, he did. He tossed him out of the static! Oh, yes, he, did. he did, and now Fox has got the duel on to always want to fly, always want to fly. He's gonna go down. VG just come in, has to bash out. Onto Foxy, but Mickey's coming across with the abyssal! Straight on the VG, they go rolling forward. Feature's able to blink out to the side. Okay. BKB popped by Quifer. Mickey turning over to Iceberg. Iceberg's BKB shortly about to come to an end. Mickey committing with the bashes, but now Feature in general, they're trying to turn it on to make it the Silence is. Silence. Tiger pushing back Feature. Feature's got to run. General's down for 50. They can't touch Mickey. Mickey just pushes on full HP on the jump. Radiance Boss and Tower. just holds his ground. He has the healing ward down for the whole fight and just, just fights them. And there's too much silence and there's, there's not enough damage. Navi. Radiance bottom barracks. Liquid. That's the second set of racks here. Has fallen. Now back off. Has fallen. Happy to, to sort of enjoy what looks to be maybe a slow and painful victory. Tis mine. But Navi's gonna have to to wait out against unless Vichu can Vichu can do something magical, but he's falling so far behind now. 5k difference, five levels difference as well. Mickey about to hit the 25. Oh, and he has, he has three deaths, and it feels like those three deaths were... Oh, he kind of forced them a little bit there. The first death, going for Koi Thunder the Ward. The second death, too. And then this third... The second death where he blinks in, and the third death where he reveals himself on an outpost. V2 slipping up a bit in Liquid. Really capitalizing on it. Now they're just just so far ahead. This anti-mage just cannot carry the game by himself. They're going to need some type of throw from Liquid. Maybe, maybe something about this anti-mage hero, you know, that sort of Carl was touching upon. You know, how there have been grand finals in the past where some of the, the best carries of all time have said, hey, give me the anti-mage. And then it, 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 something about it in grand finals just... It, it seems like it's almost a curse. Yes, even into a Storm Spirit. It's, it's just a tough hero to make work. We've been seeing it fall out of favor for that reason for a long time. And yeah, we're seeing Liquid all grouped up at the ready here. BKB's on, I mean, even Earth Spirit has one now, and Aghanim's on Insania, so the stronger your anti-mage is, the stronger my Dark Portrait is as well, and AM is one of the best Dark Portraits you can make. Oh, that's yeah, this that's is just Liquid true. covering all their bases. Trying to surprise have him here, killed. but the Courier scouts it all out. That's Roshan. Smoke coming out. It's up in 15. Liquid's gonna smoke and just run right into them and like look for the fight. This fight is so hard for Navi. They're, I mean, look at the lanes. The base is starting to get pressured now by creeps. Navi, what's the plan? What's the plan, Navi? Liquid's just gonna... They're just gonna run right in with all these BKBs, and this fight for Navi looks so damn oh, hard. Oh, he's gotta be careful. Drinking away. Hey, Koifa. In the river. Tiger's gonna side there. The leading features are gonna be able to get it. Features able to jump in and find it. Koifa is in. On to General. General goes down the leash. And VG's gonna have the dual control. As again, they're in with the tour. Only slash out. Vichu set for 80 seconds. Gone. He's out of the game. Roger is as well. Double kill for Incendies. He's cleaning up with the dark portrait. There it is. VG is called. Liquid will take this game. And with that, the series, the championship title, it's theirs. As they are your ESL1 Germany 2020 online champion. Champions, and my goodness, do they deserve it. The work that this team's put in over the months, and now they come in.